given that you've, you're now doing this humanist stuff, which is obviously people are giving it a lot of attention. You've obviously got, you know, like I say, you've, you've had a really good time doing that and you've, you've put some good stuff out, but then you've also had the exit calm stuff and, and the, and the touring, like, how do you define success as a person then? Cause obviously different people have different levels of what success means to them. To me, you would be, you know, I'd consider you a, a wicked success cause you've done so much cool stuff. You've done, you know, you've collaborated with good people. You've obviously made some good friends, lifelong friends. To me, that's what it's all about. But some people define it as money and traveling all the time, 24 yeah. seven. So what does success mean to you then? Uh, well, it's a fucking good question, and it's something I've learned over there. Success is, I, I think, creating a piece of music that you're fucking proud of. That is the success. Like you know, like I, I, the the reward is in the music itself, and yeah. it's not in the other things. Because if if you get into the music for any financial gain, then you're going to be let down very quickly. Yeah, because it's a long haul. It's a struggle. And it's not easy even for the established artists. And that's where the industry's gone these days. But that's not to say that things aren't change or that you can't be a success in it. It's just how you measure the success in them. To me, you know, in Exit Camp, for example, we we didn't really make any money out of it. But we what we did do is we, we got ourselves into a position where we sold a number, we, we, could, we knew we could sell a number amount of records. And when we played places like London, we knew we could probably sell out a 300 capacity venue and that's that's fucking success man if you can turn up and and uh, you know in a small sense to it you know i was happy with that we, we could turn up in nottingham you know what i mean at the bodega and sell it out now it's probably only 150 capacity but to have 150 people yeah. love your music that's an amazing amazing thing honestly and it's uh i think that that's it it's all about kind of perception and perspective and you've got to realize that create it just because you feel the need to make music it doesn't mean that other people might be interested in it so i think you've just got to kind of do it anyway the, reward, the music itself yeah yeah do it and don't expect anything from it and it, you know making a, a piece of music that you're proud of is is fucking is the success absolutely if other people like it then that's a fucking amazing thing as well do you know what i mean but yeah the con yeah you have to kind of make sure that well, for me, you know, like you said, the, the most important thing is the music, man. It's like, you, in a way, it's almost like counselling music for me. I've got so much through music over the years, listening to other people's music growing up, and it's inspired me, it's got me out of dark places, it's helped me, well, yeah. you know, it's pulled me up when I've been feeling down, It's you know, and so to be able to, to now, I'm trying to make music that almost like heals me in a way you know what i mean it's like i feel like i need to write to write music and i create the music that i want to listen to and when i get it to a place where that where i feel inspired by what i'm listening to and my hair stands up then that's that's the biggest fucking reward and that's the biggest success that you could ever hope to get yeah man i appreciate i appreciate that a lot i think that's fantastic we'll talk a bit about uh you know the, the kind of other ways the music has kind of uh, made you feel and, and you know helped you out in a, in a, in a few minutes because i think that's a really good uh, thing to, to talk about but just um, you know some of the people you've got involved like I met um, John Robb a few years ago in Hungary um, uh, covering a festival but then obviously he does Louder Than War as well so we've had a couple of conversations about you know the sort of music scene in the north of England and, and opportunities and he's a good lad like must have been cool getting John involved and obviously Dave Garn as well like like in terms of collaborations was that always something and is that something you're going to continue to do with Humanist is it always going to be that collaborative thing because I guess taking this kind of thing out into the world you know in a live setting would be a complete challenge but obviously as a studio thing um, you know as a soundtrack to people's lives as a soundtrack to people's you know, to, to give them, to give people, a, um, you know, a, a soundtrack to whatever they're going through. That seems to be what a humanist, a humanist is. is. Is that your goal for, for the project? I think so, yeah. I, I think it, I, I, what I've tried not to do is think about it too much. It's, yeah. I guess, like, I've just tried to allow it to have its, like, organic um, flow, you know what I mean? I haven't tried to control control it so much, uh, like or have, like, a, it, it's an evolving thing. And I, and, and I guess like I, I'm, I'm all about collaborating. I love like working with different people. So I can't see that it would change really. I mean, I, I think as humanist ongoing, we'll have, have 
continue to evolve in that sense. You know, maybe um, a record might be with one person, or it might be like like this record's being with lots of different people. I'm not really sure at the moment. You know, just kind of it still feels that it's at that early stage where anything's possible. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking kind of. I guess uh, I, I love bands like Uncle. And oh yeah, man. Vegas, and you know, yeah. I, I guess there's a lot to to be said about you know, it, it could be anything. It could be you know, maybe it could expand into a soundtrack of a film. That would be like a cool thing to do. Or maybe it could be a, another record like this one with lots of different singers. Or maybe a record with just one one singer. You know, I'm not really sure at this stage what where it's going to evolve. But in terms of like the collaborators and stuff, I mean, John, for example, you know. It, I did a record with Mark Lanigan. Uh, I've done a yeah. couple of records yeah, with yeah. Mark Lanigan. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and when Gargoyle came out, which is one of the records that I wrote some tracks with Mark on, uh, John kind of, I, that's where we kind of connected. I mean, John came down to CX and Calm a couple of times, I think, but, um, and was a fan of that band. But um, we, yeah, I think, I can't remember how we connected really. It might have been just through social media, but basically we ended up hooking up and. Uh, he heard about the record that I was making and he was a big fan of Gar- the Gargoyle record. And he was like, oh, he was in Hastings and he was like, oh, pop round and uh, see you. And I played him a few tracks of the record and we had a few cups of tea or whatnot because, you know, John's like a total fitness fanatic. And, yeah, of uh, course. Teetotal. And, um, and then next thing, we, you know, we just started, right? Uh, he, we, he was going to play it on actually one of uh, an old uh, track that I had that yeah. I didn't end up putting on the record. But then we just kind of went, oh, should we just do something new? And, and within like a few minutes, I set up like a drum pattern and he, was, he played bass, I played guitar and sang and, and, and then we had a track, man. You know, nice. it, was, it, took, it, it took as long as it, it is on the recording, really. Do you know, it was like, I, I think we did a jam that was about 18 minutes long and then I kind of edited it down afterwards and added a few little things, but it was pretty much created there and then you know whereas the other tracks were slightly different I wrote all those and then sent them off instrumentally to different singers and stuff like that so and then they put stuff on that's amazing man like yeah. it must it must be really cool to see it all coming together and see people you know get behind it you know you've been playlisted quite a lot a lot of people are you know digging it and stuff so I mean do you feel like this is an you know kind of an evolution for you as an artist not away from Exit Calm and all that era because obviously you wrote, that's always going to be a part of who you are but do you feel like this is kind of an evolution for you? I would I would say so actually yeah because I, I uh, with, within the two previous bands that I'd been in it was all like I was a guitar player within those bands you know yeah. and we were we were all about writing in the in the room together and stuff like that and, it, and my role really was to make this or in, especially in my head anyway was to make this big guitar sound and uh, I kind of felt like I'd done that as good as I could do it I'd achieved everything I wanted to achieve in terms of the big guitar sound and actually towards the end I felt like that role was starting to restrict me a little bit because I couldn't evolve from it because it was almost like we were trapped in this scenario where oh you know it was if I tried to do something slightly different um it's not sounding big enough you know what I mean I was in this role where it was all everything always had to sound big so starting with humanist I didn't really want to do anything that was like a big guitar record. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm a guitar player, and it's always going to find its way in, it, into those, like, into that kind of like scenario. I guess that eventually, and it has on some of the tracks. But I wanted to try and, ex- I don't know, kind of push forward and, and do something different that I hadn't done before. Because that's the, that's the whole point, isn't it? You've got to really challenge yourself and just kind of. Yeah, I think man. I just, yeah, I, 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 sorry, not to keep going. No, 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 you man, go ahead. It's really cool. It's really interesting for me to listen to your kind of creative process, man, and obviously it's going to motivate some other people as well. So, yeah. You know. Well, I, I, I guess, like, in, in a way, that um, in the past I've been guilty of thinking when involved in the writing role that like, things should, when, when you kind of find that inspiration, those ideas. I always had this other thing, really, that like, oh, but I need to make it sound like this, like this idea of what I thought it should sound like. Well, with few minutes, I didn't think about anything. I just let it happen. 
I didn't question it. I think it previously I've been guilty of kind of always going, but yeah, but is that right? Or should it be a bit more like this? Whereas with the humanist stuff, I just allowed it to come out. So the creation, the, the creative role just kind of was very real. And I didn't think about the process. I just allowed it to happen. And only afterwards did I go, all right, is what kind of track is that? Then does it fit on the record? That right? You know, I, I didn't have to answer or to question. Oh, you know, there, nobody was questioning what I was doing. I just, I was just, it was just me. And I didn't even because I guess that I didn't know what it was or what it was going to become. I wasn't concerned about it, so it was about as pure as it got, really. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, you know I mean, it's, absolutely, man, absolutely. I think it's obviously taken you back to your kind of you know the, the finding that you know you talk about the bands you grew up loving it's kind of taking you back to that kind of passion and i think being able to collaborate with with you know with the people you've worked with it must be you know it's a pleasure it sounds like it's been an absolute pleasure for you to pull together which is which is oh, awesome man. absolutely yeah I, I, what a, i mean i don't you know what a gift it is how lucky i am to be able to work with people like i mean mark's one of the greatest vocalists and lyricists in my opinion that's out there man. yeah of like, course a total, you know, he's real and pure and, you know, an incredible talent. And uh, and then, uh, you know, outside of Mark, you know, just even like Dave Kahn, you know what I mean? He's, Course, mate. Course. It's insane, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's what, what, a, what a lucky fucker, you know, to be able to, to help somebody like Dave on the record. I mean, Dave's voice clearly connects with people. You know, of course, man. Depeche Mode are... Uh, huge band and obviously Martin Gore is a, a brilliant writer but um, even you know the, the, I know that they've all been writing over the last kind of last 15 years and anyway you know they're just one of the you know what one of the biggest bands around and it's a total pleasure to have Dave on the record and then outside of that you know people like even like Ron Sexsmith man, yeah. like, even, Ron Sexsmith's a, a, a total genius as well you know incredible singer songwriter and a wild card actually and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do on the record because I didn't want people to suddenly think that it was there was only a kind of it was only open to a certain sort of style kind of genre, yeah. genre of, you know what I mean it's yeah. not like I, I'm, I'd work with anyone if there were you know if, if I felt like I could get you know get something musically out of it you know like if we could if I felt like I could connect with somebody then I, on a musical level then you know the doors totally open it's like there's no boundaries or anything I don't there's no restrictions with this record or with the idea of what humanist is and where it could be going forward mate mate that's it's that's beautiful it's a good you know i think that's one of the things is when when you can create music that's making you happy and it's kind of making you know you talk about like the hairs on your on the, your neck standing up and you're making it that's the sign for me like like i've yet i've made some stuff where i'm like that's good but it doesn't fucking doesn't you know then and then there's other stuff where i'm like that's amazing and that that to me feels like you know when you can make something you're really proud of and that makes you you know just really happy. Yeah, Dom, yeah. Dom I, I can tell you that every single track on that record, uh, I, I, I work, you know, the ideas come fast. Yeah. And, but the, the mixing process and the production and the layering of instruments and, 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 and more so the mixing really, it's like I did not, I put everything I've got into those tracks in that record and I did not stop on it until every single song made my hair stand up and it was only then that I left that I, I knew that I, I was yeah. ready to move on to the next track and that has always been my uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, is, it, is it goal or yeah well you know like yeah kind of the, that's always been like the, the, the ultimate you know yeah. it's like that's the, the cut off point really it's like if, it, if, it's, if you're not turning yourself on it then forget it you know yeah I mean? ab absolutely man absolutely so you do you say uh, where are you based like where do you work out of is it, is it studio in hastings or what was it okay uh, so it's st leonard's on sea where i'm based and nice. i've got a little studio in my flat and nice. uh, it's very basic as well that's one of the things i think that i guess you know you were talking about early on the advice yeah to give to other people is uh, uh, look I, i'm from the northeast of england I'm from stockton on tees right and i've I'm working class. I've got. Uh, I've never ever had any any money really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. never had the the pick of the crop when it comes to equipment and guitars and pedals. You know, I've had to struggle by over the years, and 
the, the equipment that I've got. Put it this way, the, the, the record was made with an M-Box, which is a, a very simple two-mic input uh, that goes into a computer and a, almost a demo version of Pro Tools. Yeah, so, which, nice. and, and, and I've got two microphones and a my guitar gear uh, and... That's, that's all you, you don't need a lot, man. You don't need expensive studios. You just need to persevere, use your ear, and have that ambition and, and, and fucking... Yeah, the graft. It's the graft, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, totally, it's man. the graft, yeah, but it's also just don't be put off by the fact that if you people around you have all this gear, and sometimes it can be it can stop people from moving forward because they've got so much fucking gear that they don't do anything. It's yeah, like, yeah. I think the most important thing is just work with what you've got and and just you know believe in yourself. Yeah, totally, believe man. In yourself that you can do it, man. That's a good. That's a good message, man. Yeah. Um, um, couple more questions then. Uh, going back to you know talking about your inspirations and stuff like outside of music then like you know like what do you what do you watch like who do you go to do you you know do you get inspiration from your family like do you do you like to go anywhere like is there anywhere you like to go for inspiration what do you read what do you yeah what do you watch like what inspire what inspires you people places whatever you know outside of the musical sphere we'll call it um what 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 motivates you well, yeah, I'm sure my girlfriend will tell you that I'm basically consumed by music pretty much <laughs> 24 so Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. There's barely any shut off like to be fair, but I guess I'm very lucky because I live next to the sea. Yeah, yeah, so of course. So being able to, uh, I, I kind of like shutting off to be honest with you and just kind of like walking on, like walking on my own and just. Uh, but then again, you know, I'm still, I'm still listening to music when I'm walking next to the sea. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, but I find that. Something as powerful as the as the sea, quite an inspiring thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Nature, really. Yeah, dude. Fuck uh, yeah. Being out, at one, you know, at one with that, you know, the, the sun, the sea, the sky, that kind of thing. Pretty basic stuff, but um. Nah, there's no one with that. You know, man. reading as well. You know, I like, I like read. You know, Bukowski and stuff. But you know, I don't really get a lot of time to do other stuff than the music. You know, and, and then you know, unfortunately, I have to do. You got a bit of work here and there to earn, you know, extra money, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough, man. That's that's good for it's good for people to know because I think like I had a talk with uh, there was another guy uh, I talked to the other day, and I think you know because he'd been doing years of touring, people were really surprised that he had a day job now, you know, and he, he worked he just worked evening shifts because you know to 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 basically so he could like tour and he could write music and build stuff, and it's like it's cool because like you know young people, especially the types of people we work with. You know, they, they know that, you know, you're grafting, they know you're creative, and they know you've done some amazing things with your career, but, you know, you're never going to stop working. You're always going to be building stuff, and you're always going to be creating, and I think that's quite a quite a, quite a a motivational thing. It's quite a motivational thing to, and, and a good message, man. So, you know, that's cool. Well, you, yeah, there's no shame in fucking hard work, man, and having to do what you've got to do in order to make things work for you. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the most important thing. It's like there's... People, I remember that years back, you know, when um, going back, it, there was a little bit of kind of like, I don't know, secret, secrecy about people having other jobs yeah, and yeah. bands, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, now I think it's just the norm. Yeah, everybody just assumes that you got to fucking work to make it, you know, to do music because it's really tough. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, know, I know bands like you, like you probably do that. Yeah, are, yeah. Um, I know, you know, artists or whatever that have quite high profile artists that have to do other stuff to supplement what you know yeah. the music stuff man. Yeah. and that's just the way it is you know it's not easy now but hopefully um things will change eventually you know the yeah. arts in this country have been neglected of course yeah you know, we, we don't look after the, those things anymore it's like i was talking about this the other day it's like you, you remember that the opening ceremony for the uh, the olympics yeah it's yeah like this huge nostalgic New, uh, opening that was based on this the, the heritage of this country and the music that is provided and they and they were celebrating it and I thought yeah but you're fucking you're not looking after it you yeah. know they, they, so, they, they it's like holding it up in in one arm and kind of sticking a gun behind its head at the moment you know because there's you look at other countries like Denmark and um, and Belgium and stuff and they support the arts so the, the government and the councils that put money into into it and you know this country doesn't look after fucking anything you know when it comes to that and it's almost like it feels like with this with all this brexit stuff that we've got to go through 
this kind of shit to get to a point where it's so bad that everybody goes, fucking hell, what are we going to do about this? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, maybe hit rock bottom and stuff to get back it's, up, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fucking... I think creative people and, and people are coming together, you know, and, and trying to think, right, we need to fucking come together on this one now and try and work, you know what I mean? So, you, know, we're, we're, you know, we're all scratching our heads a little bit at the moment. Oh, yeah. Where the fuck and yeah. How, how, you know, what, what to do, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway, not to get too, no, no. It's, 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 honestly, man, it's good to it's good to you know it's good to chat to you on on this Brexit day because it's been fucking it's been a long fucking day. So it's nice talking to you about about music and stuff. Um, I I, I did want to ask you about um, you know, because you talked about how music has got you through some dark times. Well, obviously, you don't have to go into too much detail. But again, I deal with a lot of people that, that you know struggle with mental health and they and they uh, you know they, they get they. They use music as a coping mechanism and stuff. And I wanted to ask you as, in as much detail as you want to say, like, how has music been able to help you? You know, some days you get out of bed or even you don't want to get out of bed, you know, and, you, and, you, and you're really struggling. Can you tell me how, you know, making music, creating music has, and even listening to other people's music even, but, but, but for yourself as an artist, how has music been able to help you uh, through dark times? Um, well, it's... Uh... I think everybody struggles a little bit with those kind of mental health issues yeah. these days, and I think it's probably to do with uh, these mobile phones, social media, this idea of what we all should be, and you know, you can never live up to this fucking image of you know this this, this modern world that we live in. It's like this digital storm's totally taken over, isn't it? It's, uh, but I mean, you know, in basic terms, I mean, when I was a kid growing up. Um, I music. I don't know. It just it was a path that allowed me to escape to a, another world. And I remember when I was uh, probably from about thirteen, fourteen. I used to just kind of lock myself away in the dark and listen to headphones, music on headphones, and I think it was like stepping into this fucking magical world. You know that that, that transported me to a different place. And that was the power that music's had on me from, you know, from very early on. And it's and it's helped me to just kind of like dream, I think, into, yeah, a, you know, the, the, into another landscape, you know what I mean? And escape probably the normality or frustration of normal life that everybody goes through, especially now because things are pretty fucking hard. So it's like I try and every day try and, I, I, you know, I've got so much, I've got such a, library of music now of things that i know that i love and so I, and i call upon those things when i need them do you know what i mean i know that if i okay now if i stick on uh you'll never get to me by killing joe oh then, yeah it's, it's, it's man yeah you want to get out of fucking bed in the morning do you know what i mean i love killing joe and actually they're one of the bands that still inspire me i mean a fucking amazing band I've, i must have I've seen them so many times over the last couple of years and they're better than but, you know, as, as good as they've ever been, I think. Yeah, I mean, man. They still blow me, you know, blowing me away, man. It's fucking... Yeah, totally, man. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, give me some more. Give me some more stuff. No, you... I, you know, but one thing I did when... Uh, so, very early on... Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is probably... I don't know if this is quite odd or not, but, you know, when I was about 14, 15... Yeah. Um, I remember listening to an album called This Is The Sea by The Waterboys. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And the final track on that album is called is called This Is a C it's the title of the record. Yeah. And um it gave me such a fucking rush and my, my it was like my hairs used to stand up when I listened to it and I thought fucking hell it made me feel like I wanted that like I could do anything right, this piece of music. And so I thought, fucking hell, well what a what a feeling that that is, you know what I mean? So what I did is every single I had a, a walk one at the time. Yeah. And, I, and I, so I recorded it on, on my tape and every morning when I woke up before, because I hated school so much, every morning before I went to school, as soon as I woke up, I leaned down and I put my headphones on and I'd listen to This Is A Sea full blast. So it was when I was like half asleep waking up and it was like, and I thought, well, I've just fucking listen to that every, every morning when I wake up because it's going to make me feel like I can get through the day and I can achieve anything. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, simple. man. Yeah. So, so I... I did that for about three or four months. I don't know, and, and I, when I look back on that, I think it's quite a poignant, a poignant thing, really, because it maybe 
I, th- I think I probably saw the power of that music early on. I didn't really understand it. Yeah. But I knew it was having an effect on me, a positive effect on me. Mate, yes. So, yeah, so, you know, I guess... Oh, that's probably relevant somehow. No, it is. It is also. It is, you know, it's a good little tip as well. If you repeatedly listen to something that inspires you, then you're going to find repeated motivation. Cool. Thanks, awesome, thanks man. so much, Tom. Yeah, no worries, man. I look forward to speaking to you again. All right. Take All it right, easy. Take, take it easy, yourself. man. Bye.